Hello, beautiful people of the internet. What's up? It's your girl, Akeisha. One of the most common inaccurate descriptions that I see in skincare, whether it be by a brand describing their products or by consumers just talking about skincare, is the use of the words hydration and moisturization interchangeably. In today's video, we're going to be talking about the difference between hydration and moisture, the reason why this distinction is important, how it may benefit different skin types, as well as some product recommendations or things to look for. If this is your first time seeing my face, my name is Lakeisha, and on this channel, I post a lot of skincare, lifestyle, makeup, and hair related videos. If that is something you're interested in, then make sure you are subscribed. Without further ado, let's get started. In the simplest terms, the purpose of a hydrator is to bind water molecules to the skin. And the purpose of moisture is to prevent water from leaving the skin. From this simple distinction between the two, you can easily see how each one can benefit the skin or also impede the skin based on what you're actually looking for. By all means, it is definitely possible and beneficial to layer both hydrating and moisturizing ingredients on top of your skin, but when it comes to creating a routine, you need to really understand what you're doing. So hopefully this will help you out a little bit. In general, there are three types of skin softening ingredients. We'll use that as an umbrella term. There are humectants, emollients, and occlusive agents. So what is a humectant? As we said before, humectants are hydrating products. These contain ingredients that help bind water to the skin. These are great for rehydrating the skin, replenishing the skin, they plump the skin, as well as maintain good hydration levels in the skin itself. If you are looking for hydrating products, here are some ingredients to look out for. There is glycerin, hyaluronic acid, urea, butylene glycol, aloe vera, uh, green tea, anything with sugars, so this would be uh, honey, or any fruit acids like AHAs for mandelic acid, lactic acid, anything around those lines. Uh, collagen can be very hydrating to the skin as well as amino acids. What is a moisturizer? Moisturizers are emollient ingredients. The term emollient refers to the thickness or the texture of the product. This essentially describes how well the ingredients soften the texture of the skin. They also fill in the gaps within the skin itself to leave you with more of a silky or smooth texture. If you're looking for products that have more moisturizing capabilities, then some of the ingredients to look out for would be vegetable oils, so like avocado oils, jojoba oils, so on and so forth. Butters like shea butter, mango butter, those type of ingredients. Anything with ceramides or lipids. Now these are really good because they are very close to what your skin actually produces, making it um, very helpful in restoring your acid mantle or your moisture barrier. You can also find silicones, it's like dimethicone. These ones leave you with a really smooth, silky texture. You'll find these in a lot of primers, um, as well as fatty acids or fatty alcohols that really help to soften the skin as well. Last but not least, let's talk about occlusive agents. Occlusive ingredients prevent water from leaving the skin by creating a thin layer or a film over the skin surface. This is really great because it prevents all of your hydrating products from evaporating. Now, where emollient products and occlusive products are concerned, the lines somewhat blur in some cases. For example, shea butter can be both an emollient, a skin softening ingredient, and it can also be an occlusive because it blocks anything from leaving the skin. But the way you can kind of see the difference is if you're looking for moisturizing emollient products specifically, uh, moisturizers like lotions contain some sort of water content. If you look at the ingredients, they'll contain water in them, some sort of humectant in them, as well as those other thickening ceramide ingredients. Where ointments are concerned, these are ingredients or products without any water whatsoever. So this is like your Vaseline, CeraVe has an ointment as well that you can put on your skin, as well as oils. These contain zero water whatsoever. So now we know the difference between all of these different types of products, but how exactly do you use it in your routine? As we mentioned before, a skincare routine that consists of both hydrating and moisturizing products can be very beneficial to the skin. However, based on your skin type, you may have a more hydration dense or moisture dense routine. Now I've covered how to layer your products in multiple videos on this channel, but I will leave it in the cards above. 
Generally speaking, when you're layering your products, you want to start by the thinnest consistencies to the thickest consistencies. Think of it this way. If you apply shea butter, for example, on your skin, shea butter is extremely thick and extremely emollient and extremely occlusive. So it's going to be really softening to the skin and prevent any moisture from leaving the skin. However, if you didn't first put water in the skin, you're not trapping anything inside. You're actually preventing the skin from being hydrated. And if you don't hydrate the skin, this leads to dehydrated skin. Where on the top of the skin, it feels nice and, and emollient and soft and movable, but underneath it feels dry and just parched. This is why I always stress the importance of putting on moisturizers while your skin is still wet. It is extremely important to do so, especially if you're using some of those thicker products that don't contain water in and of themselves. Let's go over the different skin types. Those who describe themselves as having dry skin typically have hypoactive or underproductive sebaceous glands. So your skin basically behaves like normal skin after you wash it, but it quickly loses its water content over time. These type of skin types would benefit from using thicker, more emollient and occlusive ingredients to make sure that the water doesn't evaporate from the skin. Somebody with oily skin type typically have hyperactive or overactive sebaceous glands. The skin generally produces enough natural oils to trap water in, but they typically don't have balanced hydration levels, so there is no water to trap inside. As the skin becomes more and more dry because of the lack of regulation in the hydration levels, the sebaceous glands react by producing more oil. So you're putting more occlusive layers on top of skin that's not even hydrated. These skin types would benefit from a more hydration focused routine, one that consists of many humectants, uh, gel consistencies with little to no oil at all because your skin produces enough. Now when it gets to combination skin, this is where it gets a little bit more confusing. And as someone with combination skin type myself, I completely understand where you guys are coming from. Combination skin types tend to vary between normal oily and dry skin types, depending on the products that you're using as well as the season. So it may be a little bit more difficult to manage. Breaking it down into two categories, if you have combination dry skin, you tend to have very normal skin, but certain areas like around the mouth or the perimeter of the face may be excessively dry. For these, you will definitely want to use a combination of hydrating ingredients everywhere else and maybe on those specific areas that are a little bit more dry, put those occlusives targeted to those areas. On the flip side, if you have more combination oily skin, you generally have more oil in the center of the face or the T-zone and it's quite normal or even sometimes dry everywhere else. So these skin types may benefit from using very hydrating ingredients everywhere and then just only keeping moisture outside of those oily areas of your face. All right, my favorite part, let's talk about some products. A good skincare routine always starts off with a cleanser. And regardless if you are wearing makeup, if you are wearing sunscreen, you should every single day. Therefore, you should be double cleansing, at least in the evening. If you are looking for more hydrating makeup removers, you can try using a micellar water. Micellar waters are great because the micelle is both a oil and water molecule that binds all the dirt to the oil side of the molecule then encapsulates it or traps it in water making it easily um, easy to come off the face if you want a more moisturizing double cleanse then you look for oils or balms the one i have is the green clean from pharmacy this is their makeup melt away cleansing balm i love this for heavy makeup and if you are somebody with dry skin you will love this so much because it cleans without actually um, stripping the skin of, of anything at all. Um, if you do have oily skin, you can still use this if you have a lot of thick, heavy um, uh, makeup on your face or a lot of layers of SPF. Just make sure to emulsify and rinse well, following up with a water-based cleanser to ensure that you're not clogging your pores. Now there are, of course, products that both hydrate and moisturize the skin. I love these when it comes to makeup removers because they tend to be cleansers that just do it all. Some of my current favorites is the Fenty Skin Total Cleanser. This is a beautiful, thick, luxurious makeup remover and cleanser all in one. You can still use this as a double cleanse or after your initial double cleanse as well. And it just leaves the skin very nice and moisturized. Now Fenty Skin is supposed to be for all skin types. So regardless if you are dry, oily combination, this will be great for you.
Another one of my favorites is the Purity Made Simple from Philosophy. Now this is a three-in-one type of product that cleanses your makeup away, cleanses your skin, as well as tones the skin. So it just fits it all in one. I love putting this in the little um, travel um, bottle that I have from Sephora, and I refill it with this whenever I'm traveling because it's just so easy to use. Um, but this one's really good because it's very moisturizing to your skin and doesn't strip it of any of the natural moistures. Once again, for all skin types. On to cleansers. If you're looking for water-based cleansers specifically, this one is from Junk Elephant. This is their cantaloupe glycerin cleanser. Glycerin, as the name suggests, it's very hydrating to the skin. It's filled with tons and tons of humectants. And when you look at it, it's clear. Typically, hydrating products are clear and moisturizing ones are more opaque. Um, another good hydrating one is the uh, Youth to the People Kale Green Tea Spinach Vitamin Superfood Cleanser. I've seen this on the shelf in like every single one of Hiram's videos and since I started using it, I have definitely seen why he loves it. It is amazing. I love this for my oily combination skin. Um, I typically use this more in the summer because in the winter my skin tends to be a bit more combination dry, but this one is beautiful. I think it, it would definitely be for all skin types. Another good hydrating cleanser would be the Low pH Good Morning Cleanser from Clauser X. This one as well has a lot of humectants in here, can be very hydrating. It's clear, like we said before, and it emulsifies into a really bubbly cleanser. So I really do like this. But of course, it doesn't actually strip the skin of any of the natural oils. If you want more of a moisturizing cleanser, this one from First Aid Beauty, it's their Pure Skin Face Cleanser. It comes off more as a cream rather than a emulsification like the other products. And you can definitely see that if the product's more creamy, it's usually more moisturizing. If it's more of like an emulsion, it's typically more hydrating. When it comes to toners, there's a plethora of different toners out there from hydrating to exfoliating and so on and so forth. This is the Dr. Jart Secret Repair Tiger Grass Calming Mist. Mists are also toners, of course. This one doesn't really have a lot of moisturizing ingredients and it is very, very watery. Like you can see through this like crazy. And when you put it on the skin, it just soaks into the skin really quickly. As for toners that are more moisturizing, this is the Aromatica Vitalizing Rosemary Concentrated Essence. I talked about this in a previous video. And when I put this on, you can still feel that there's something on the skin. It, it feels like it, it, it just has this emulsion on the skin. Essence tend to be a little bit more moisturizing so if you're someone with dry skin you may want to look for emulsions or or essences because they typically have some more moisturizing ingredients in there versus just toner water specifically so one of my favorites for hydrating serums would be the Inculus hyaluronic acid this is one of the more basic hydrators that I'm pretty sure everybody and their mama knows about um, <laughs> it's clear so it's gonna be more hydrating than moisturizing it holds a thousand times its weight in water just attracts more water molecules on the skin. If you're going to be using something like this, definitely suggest wetting the face or still having your toner damp so that there's some water for the hyaluronic acid to pull deeper into the skin. If you're looking for a moisturizing serum slash toner, I suppose, this is the Innisfree Olive Real Skin EX. I don't know if that's etc. or I don't know, but it's made with olive oil. This one is a little bit more opaque and when you put it on your skin, you can definitely feel that it's a little bit more moisturizing. It has like a layer on the skin that keeps it more soft than a hyaluronic acid would. Serums are definitely one of those places where you can get the best of both the worlds. This is typically where I spend the most of my money with serums. Um, because they have a high water content, they tend to have a lot of humectants. They also contain some thickening or emollient ingredients, as well as, of course, the actives. So some examples are the Naturium, Azeolic, Topical Acid 10%. This one has niacinamide and vitamin C. It's really, really beautiful texture on the skin. Leaves it nice, feeling good and hydrated and plump, as well as, of course, brightening to the skin. So love this here. Another one is the Youth to the People 15% Vitamin C with Caffeine. This is really, really good at plumping up the skin because of the caffeine as well, those added benefits. Lots of water in here. And of course, the Vitamin C is really great. I don't find this to be irritating, although a lot of Vitamin Cs tend to irritate my skin. This one I have really found any irritation with it um but yeah i i really do enjoy this one too another great serum slash essence this is a new one this is the madeka relief essence from centellian 24. this one's kind of a serum slash essence but it's really good for brightening the skin has a lot of those 
um, anti-wrinkle properties because of the hydration. Hydration, like we said, plumps up the skin, but because it's more of an essence, more of a thicker type of product, um, it's gonna keep some of that moisture on top to prevent water from leaving. On the trend of more hydrating ingredients, aloe vera is a great option. This one is the Holika Holika 99% aloe. And this is really good. I love using this on my face, on my skin after shaving. It just provides water content to the skin without leaving any oil behind. So love this, especially for acne prone. If you're looking for a moisturizer that is hydrating, the Sun By Me AHA BHA PHA 30 Days Miracle Cream is really good because it is more of a gel consistency. For some people with really oily skin, sometimes gels are just enough and you just use the natural oils in your skin to do the rest of the work. <laughs> on the other hand, if you're looking for a moisturizer that is more emollient or thicker on the skin, you may want to do a lotion. This one is the CeraVe Daily Moisturizing Lotion. It's for normal to dry skin. Although I find that lotions still can fit people with oily skin or combination oily skin as well, because they have more water content in them. If you're looking for something that's thicker, Notorium's Plant Ceramide Rich Moisture Cream. I love this for in the evening especially because now i'm using benzoyl peroxide as well as retinol on my skin they tend to be very very drying so i do need a little help in that moisturizing area this one has a base of shea butter so like we said before very little to no water content more of a thicker emollient product so if i did not put all of these hydrating ingredients in my skin this would actually do more harm than good because i won't be actually hydrating For people with dry skin type you're gonna love this so much because it's gonna trap all of that water inside for something even thicker, if you find shea butter is not enough for you, then you'll want to go on to occlusive agents. For these, they can be oils. This is the Cosmia Australia's Rosehip Oil. I love this oil. It has vitamin A in it as well. So really good to combine with using retinol if you want something thicker on your skin. Um, very good product to use. There's also the Naturium Virgin Marula Face Oil 100%. Once again, it's going to be that occlusive softening agent to the skin because it's an oil, there's no water content. Um, of course, you can get an actual ointment or emollient product. This is petroleum gel, white petroleum jelly. And sometimes I actually put this around my mouth because I've been getting a lot of dryness around my mouth recently because of the winter season, retinol, you guys know the spiel. So this can be very, very helpful for people with dry spots in their face. I typically don't put this everywhere. I'll put it where I actually need it, <laughs> dry patches and such. And of course, we'll talk about face masks. So you can actually use aloe vera as a hydrating face mask. It has a lot of water content. I would just like put a big glob of this all over my face and then just leave it there for hmm, 20 minutes or so or just until it kind of soaks in. I don't let this fully dry. For aloe vera specifically, I don't wash this off. Um, I'll actually just kind of let it get tacky on my face. Then I will rehydrate with a facial spray before going into other serums. Um, you can use a sheet mask that's very hydrating as well. If you're looking for something a little bit more natural, this is the Black Forest Honey. I've done a whole video using honey on my skin and I really do enjoy this one. Black Forest Honey specifically doesn't have any pollen in it, so if you have allergies towards pollen, sometimes um, flower pollinated honey can be a bit irritating to your skin, as well as, of course, you know, their animal byproducts. But this is from a tree, it's from literally a tree, it's tree sap, so no issues there. And for moisturizing face masks, this is the Mer Organic Vegan Rose Hip and Green Tea Nourishing Mask. This one is very moisturizing to the skin. It literally just melts into your skin like an oil. You kind of leave it on your face. You can moist, you can um, massage your skin with this one as well. I love doing facial cupping using this one. And then you rinse it off a little bit so it's not like fully on your face and you're good to go. So that is the end of the video. I hope you guys learned a little bit about the difference between hydration and moisturizer. And hopefully going forward, you can never use them interchangeably ever again. As always, leave your comments down below of tips tips or tricks that you have, product recommendations, we would all love to know. Click over here to see some of my previous videos. And as always, stay gorgeous, stay fabulous, because I will see you lovely ladies and gents in the next video. Bye.